An unexpected use of polar form graphing comes up actually with complex numbers, specifically when we want to multiply and divide complex numbers. The question is going to be, can polar help multiply or divide complex numbers? But before we get to multiplying and dividing complex numbers, we need to look at how complex numbers relate to polar coordinates. But then, how do complex numbers even relate to graphing? Let's look at how we can graph a complex number. Complex numbers are numbers like 5 plus 2i or negative 3 plus 4i, maybe 7 minus 8i. Complex numbers have a real and an imaginary part where i is the square root of negative 1. What we're going to do then is we're going to say the point is x plus yi, which generates this rectangular point x comma y in rectangular. So then the numbers up above here, 5 plus 2i is the point 5 comma 2. Negative 3 plus 4i is the point negative 3 comma 4. 7 minus 8i is the point 7 comma negative 8. And so that way we end up with this xy coordinate point in complex numbers. So our graph then becomes the x-coordinate. And the y-coordinate can also be thought of as the real axis on x and the imaginary axis on y. And so when we graph the point 5, 2, the point 5, 2 would be to the right 5 and up 2, and that would be the point 5 plus 2i as a complex number graphed on the rectangular plane. Negative 3 comma 4, backwards 3, up 4, that would be the point negative 3 plus 4i. And so similarly, we could graph any complex point in the rectangular plane. But we're not interested in rectangular points right now. We're interested in polar points, polar complex numbers. And with polar complex numbers, we're going to take a look at this rectangular point x plus yi. And we know we can convert it to polar because x is equal to r cosine theta plus y is r sine theta times i. Well, since both of these have an r in it, we can factor out the r, and we get cosine theta plus, I'm going to move the i out front, i sine theta. And this format is going to be very common for us to work with. In fact, it's so common that we're going to abbreviate all that stuff in parentheses with c for cosine, i for the square root of 1, and s. And so you'll often see the cis theta for cosine plus i sine theta written as a shortcut. It's shorthand for cosine plus i sine. So for example, if I've got the complex number 5 minus 5 square root of 3i, we could convert it to polar form by identifying r, the radius, and theta, the angle. r, the radius, we know is x squared, which would be 5 squared, plus y squared, 5 root 3 squared, equals r squared. So simplifying, we get r squared equals 25 plus 25 times 3, or 100. 
taking the square root of both sides, I now know the radius is equal to 10. We still need to figure out our angle theta. But we know that the cosine of theta is going to equal the x part, 5, divided by the radius, which is 10. So then the cosine of theta is equal to 1 half. Similarly, the sine of theta is equal to the y-coordinate, negative 5 root 3, divided by the radius of 10. So the sine of theta is equal to negative root 3 over 2 when we reduce. So now if I just think about my unit circle, cosine is 1 half, a short distance. Sine, the y-coordinate, is the long negative 3 root 2. And that's going to be a third. We've got 1 third, 2 thirds, 3 thirds, 4 thirds, 5 thirds. That's 5 pi over 3 is equal to my angle. And so 5 minus 5 root 3i as a complex number is equal to the radius 10 times the cosine of my angle 5 pi over 3 plus i times the sine of my angle 5 pi over 3. Or how we'll probably abbreviate this is that's 10 cosine plus i sine of 5 pi over 3. Let's do one more, but this time we're going to go the other way. Let's take a polar complex number, which is the square root of 2 times the cosine of 3 pi over 4 plus i sine of 3 pi over 4. And we're going to convert it to a rectangular complex number. Well, this is just as simple as simplifying the expression as it looks. On the unit circle, 3 pi over 4, 1, 2, 3 pi over 4, we know that's negative root 2 over 2, comma root 2 over 2. So the cosine or the x-coordinate is negative root 2 over 2, plus i times the sine, the y-coordinate, a positive root 2 over 2. Now I just need to simplify by distributing that square root of 2 onto both pieces. That's going to give us a negative. Root 2 times root 2 is 2, divided by 2 is 1 plus i. Root 2 times root 2 is 2, divided by 2 is 1. And so we get the rectangular form of the complex number, negative 1 plus i, is the same as the polar complex number, root 2 cosine 3 pi over 4 plus i sine 3 pi over 4. OK, all of that was to set up how we can talk about complex numbers as polar points. But the question was, how can polar points help us multiply and divide complex numbers? Specifically in polar form. Let's set up the theory behind what we're going to do. Let's take two complex polar numbers. We'll call it a times the cosine of alpha plus i times the sine of alpha. And we're going to multiply it by a second complex number, b times the cosine of beta plus i times the sine of beta. Well, if I multiply a times b, we just get a, b. When I multiply the stuff in parentheses, let's kind of foil it out. We'll do cosine alpha times cosine beta. Cosine alpha times i sine beta gives us plus i cosine alpha sine beta. i sine 
times cosine gives us plus i sine alpha cosine beta. And then when we multiply i times i, we'll get negative 1. i squared is negative 1 times sine alpha sine beta. Let's reorganize this a little bit. We're going to take the cosine cosine and the negative sine sine and group those together. So cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta plus the two terms that have an i on them. I'm going to factor the i out. And that's going to leave me with cosine alpha Actually, let's do the other term first. It's just going to flow better that way. Sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine of beta. And the reason that's nice is we should recognize those pieces as one of our properties. Those are from our sum and difference formulas. Cosine cosine minus sine sine is equal to the cosine of the sum of the angles plus i times sine cosine plus cosine sine is the sine of the sum of the angles. Which means at the beginning, if we wanted to multiply the two complex polar numbers together, what we could have done is just multiplied a times b, multiply the radius, radii, I guess, because there's two radii. And then the angles alpha and beta could have been added together, alpha plus beta. Add the angles. So for example, if I have three cosine plus i sine of pi over 3, and I want to multiply 5 times cosine plus i sine of pi over 6, all I have to do is multiply the radii together. 3 times 5 is 15. And then it's cosine plus i sine of, and we add the angles together, pi over 3 plus pi over 6. Multiplying by 2 gives me 15 cosine i sine of 3 pi over 6, or 15 cosine i sine of pi over 2. All we have to do is multiply the radii and add the angles, and we're done. If you remember when we multiplied complex numbers in the rectangular form, we had to FOIL everything out. Then we had to combine like terms. Then we had to simplify i squared to the negative 1. That made more like terms to combine. It was a lot more work. But in polar form, it's a lot more straightforward to multiply the complex numbers. Just multiply the radii and add the angles. Similarly, if I have a complex polar point of a cosine alpha plus i sine alpha, and we want to divide it by a complex polar number, b cosine beta plus i sine beta, that's going to be equal to Instead of multiplying, now we'll divide the radii. And then we'll have cosine of the difference in the angles, alpha minus beta plus i sine of alpha minus beta. So let's take a look at an example where we do exactly that. And let's actually make it a little more interesting. Let's take a look at 8 square root of 3 minus 8i 
divided by negative 2 minus 2i. Now, normally, if you remember in rectangular form, we had to rationalize the denominator by multiplying by the conjugate, which resulted in multiplying in the numerator. We had to simplify the denominator, possibly reduce. This was a very involved multi-step problem. We're going to make this much easier by converting this to a polar division problem and then use our property where we can divide the radius and subtract the angle. So first, we need to know the radius. Let's do the 8 root 3 minus 8i first. So the radius squared then is equal to 8 root 3 squared plus negative 8 squared, which means the radius squared is 64 times 3 plus 64 is 256. Taking the square root, r is equal to 16. I also know that the cosine of theta is equal to 8 root 3 divided by the 16. So the cosine of theta is equal to root 3 over 2. The sine of theta is equal to negative 8 divided by the radius of 16. So the sine of theta is equal to negative 1 half. So on my unit circle, Go root 3 over 2 comma negative 1 half. That's going to be 11 pi over 6. Let's write this problem. The numerator we just found out is actually equal to a radius of 16 times cosine plus i sine of 11 pi over 6. In the denominator, then, we're going to do the negative 2 minus 2i. Let's convert that to its polar form. r squared is equal to negative 2 squared plus negative 2 squared. r squared is equal to 4 plus 4, or 8. So r is the square root of 8, which simplifies to 2 root 2. The cosine of my angle is the x-coordinate divided by 2 root 2, which gives me negative 1 over root 2. And then when we rationalize the denominator by multiplying by the square root of 2, we end up with negative root 2 over 2. The sine of the angle is the y-coordinate, negative 2, over the 2 root 2, just like before the 2's divide out. And then we rationalize the denominator. So the sine of theta is equal to negative root 2 over 2. And so if I graph this, negative root 2 over 2 comma negative root 2 over 2 sticks me down in the third quadrant. And that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pi over 4 for the angle. So we now know up at the top here, negative 2 minus 2i has a radius of 2 root 2 cosine i sine of an angle 5 pi over 4. This is going to be much easier to work with. First, with the fraction, 16 over 2 is going to be 8. And I'm going to go ahead and rationalize that denominator by multiplying by root 2 over 2. That'll give me 8 root 2 over 2 cosine i sine of, now with the angles, we subtract the angles. 11 pi over 6 minus 5 pi over 4. Final reducing here, 8 over 2 is 4. So we have 4 root 2 cosine i sine. I'm going to do a common denominator of 12. That's 22 pi over 12. Multiplying by 3 would be 15 pi over 12. 22 minus 15 is 7 pi over 12. And we now have divided these complex numbers.
So polar coordinates actually become very useful with complex numbers because the operations are easier to do in polar form than they are to do in rectangular form. All we need to do is first convert the rectangular complex number to a polar complex number. And once we do, in order to multiply two complex numbers, we multiply the radius and add the angles. Or if we're dividing two complex numbers, we divide the radius and subtract the angles. Take a look at practicing this on the homework assignment, and let me know if you have any questions.